So why don't we um, just call the meeting to order at 5.04 p.m. Um, and open the meeting, I guess because I'm just, I'm running my mouth, I'm sort of chairing the meeting by default. So um, we're gonna turn to the ANR. So um, Tim and company, who's gonna, uh, it looks like, I guess we'll share the electronic plan that you've sent us and I have it. Uh, Sarah, you've given me screen sharing. Uh, yes. Permission. Let me make sure I can bring this up. Uh, bring it up. Give me one second, folks, to just bring it up in a, in a normal PDF reader and then share my screen. Okay. And so typically, um, it was Tim John and um, Tim so. Nurse John Place. And yeah, give us your name clearly on Rachel the Rachel Manette. For... Okay, I'll try now. Rachel Manette. How would you spell that last name, please? M-O-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Okay, so we can capture that in the minutes. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share the electronic copy that you sent. Um, I can expand it, contract it, do whatever you want me to do, but normally we have the applicants kind of tell us their story first and then followed by board questions. Okay, well, uh, we, uh, because Mary owned, uh, own the, the house lot uh, as far as the uh, and and uh, with a connection to the farm and with now Mary having dementia and is not uh, able to uh, be involved uh, we're just trying to get the, the clean up the, the the boundary lines of this um, uh, as requested by the bank so therefore, um, uh, Dan Warner, Warner uh, put this together that, that takes, takes uh, uh, all of the things that are need to be done to, to uh, put the, the greenhouse properties, uh, uh, greenhouse structures on, on, the, uh, on, the, <clears throat> on the LLC property. And uh, uh, make it uh, legitimate. So that's that's why we filed the application. All right. So maybe you could walk us through. Um, I guess I'm trying to just understand what are the original boundary lines and what's changing or what's being subdivided. Well, the, the original boundary line is the line that cuts through the greenhouses right there. Okay. Yes. This one. Yes. Right. Okay. And so, and, and so is it, it, is my understanding correct that this sort of almost triangular piece is being um, taken out of the main parcel and added to the LLC? Yes, that's correct. I see. So this area in here with the plot, with the line that runs through the greenhouses, that's currently part of the Mary Nurse land. That's correct. Okay. Um, and so you're going to reduce that parcel by redrawing the boundary line this way. And, and so this, this parcel which is non-buildable will what will what will its journey in its life be will it then be combined with the adjoining light or will it just remain in this sort of strange non-buildable chunk well no it'll become part of the this, this 87 acres in that whole plot and so that that sliver uh, including all the greenhouses and the, and the, and the set-aside distance that will become 
part of the uh, LLC property. Okay. They're just moving the boundary line over. Yes, that's Good. right. And I think I remember, Tim, the other piece that you spoke to me on the phone about is that this barn shown here is presently on the property, but when you redraw the boundary line, obviously that intersects with a corner of the barn and breaks side setbacks. So your it looks to me like your plan is, and I believe this is a plan versus something that has been already completed, is that you're going to um, reduce the size of the barn so that the, the corner, I guess the north, you know, the north corner of the barn is no more than the west corner. Yes. Yeah. No fur. I guess it's still a twenty-foot side setback, as I recall. Yes. Okay. That's really that, not part of our decision. That's. I'm sorry, Judy. That's their problem. It's not really part of our decision. I don't. Think. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's good to that they're aware of it, but I think we shouldn't. I, I, our issue is just whether the moving the boundary line is in accord with okay. with our regulations, which I think it is. Tim, is any of this under APR? No. Oh. Okay. That's good. That would be a complication. Yes. Yes. Well, are there any other? If, if if that's all there is to it, it does seem pretty straightforward. And there are other things that we need to be concerned about here, Judy? I don't think so. And not really affecting the frontage. It's on it's on a way. It's just a slight, a very small movement of an existing property line. Right. And this parcel clearly, just by cutting off a little bit of frontage, it still has. It still meets the frontage requirements. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I move we accept it. I second. second that motion. Okay, so motion is made and seconded. So I guess we'll do a roll call vote. Um, uh, Judy? Aye. Tom? Aye. Sarah? Aye. And Brant is aye. So four, four out of four is all we need. Okay, so, oh, um, Tim and company, is it, uh, have you submitted all the required hard copies along with the check to town hall? Yes. Okay. I, and the mylar, is the mylar there too? Yes, the mylar and four copies and the, and the, and the signed certificate and a check for $50. Perfect. Okay, so, so we have to get down and sign the mylar and the plans. That's right. Um, so I'll work with, as before, what's today? Um, I'll see if I can coordinate with Don maybe tomorrow to get down there. Don, Don, can't, Don can't go. Oh, is that so? Well, he's, he didn't attend the meeting. Oh. I'm, has to be. I'm available tomorrow. I, no, can I, do think, it tomorrow I think I should be able to get there tomorrow. Okay. We just need, a, as far as I know, a minimum, just need three signatures. And well, four, four wouldn't hurt, you know, the more the merrier, but yeah, we only need three. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. All right. So what, what we will need is the stamp. Oh, I know. I think I know where Don keeps the stamp in the, in the town offices. There's a limited search space, so I should be able to find it. Very good. Okay, so Tim and company, I think you're you're good. Um, I think we're done with we're done with you. <laughs> you can leave now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Yep. Appreciate your. Hold on, uh, just hold on a sec, Sarah. Once we're all signed, who will be notifying Tim and company that it's? I will do that. I have Tim's email address, so as soon as we have the documents ready for you to pick up. At town offices, I'll email you. Or or Amy can. Or Amy can. Somebody 
somebody in an official capacity will let you know. Is that good? Any other questions for us? Okay, so uh, I will be getting a, a, a signed copy of the Mylar. Yes. For, for the, okay. Is and that, a, and a signed that? copy of the plan. You can get a paper and, copy of the Mylar. Yeah, and okay. we'll give you, there's always the, um, I believe the application, the ANR application form that you submitted with the check will have, we will sign off on that. And so you'll have the Mylar and a document, signed document that says the ANR was approved. All right, very good then. Okay. Thank you for your uh, right. assistance on this matter. Very good, have a great right. evening. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well. Hello so people. <laughs> Hi Mary. Hi, I'm here, but I was like nine minutes late and then my power went out, so I just, I heard just about nothing of that. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, it's all caught on video and recorded for you. So it okay. was approved. It was approved time. unanimously with minimal discussion. So. Okay. All right. So, in the interest of, um, uh, we'll definitely have you back to your guests soon, Judy. So let me uh, again. What I want to do is share on my screen. This email. What about what about revising the guidelines? Oh, that's right. That was officially on the agenda. So we want to do that next. Yeah. All right. Is there anything we should screen share about that, Judy? Well, I sent a document. I don't think it was the the guideline revision was fairly simplistic. Um, I just insert one thing that occurred in the course of this a and application that I somehow never noticed before is that there's no place on the application to put either the address or the parcel number of the lot that the a &R is being applied to. So I went, when I went to do the agenda, I was kind of at a loss and Amy found for me the plan. So so that, that worked. So I inserted a line on the main part just saying please tell us where this thing is and yeah. then on the back we are just trying to share my screen so you can all see what we're talking about and on the back on the second item i just added in addition to the form four copies of form a and the plan uh to submit one digital copy of the plan. And then I just added on the second, the next sentence that explaining where those paper copies were going. So I inserted the word paper. So those are the only two changes I made to the form A. Do you think Judy regarding, um, it, it's certainly great, perfectly good and clear to add on the first page, the line about the address and the number of the affected parcel. So that's really good. Um, now that we've added a requirement for a digital copy, should this paragraph be, should there be some indication of like an email address to where the digital copy should be sent? Right now that's not specified. Well, that's a good point. Well, it should go to the town clerk, shouldn't it? Or should it? I was I mean, thinking that, it should be emailed to the town clerk rather than yeah. to the planning board. Okay, so we can just insert to the. So, like one paper copy and blah, blah, blah. And maybe, how about before the sentence about you will also need to bring a copy of the plan on my law? We could add a sentence that could say the digital copy should be sent by electronic. Why not just add to the town clerk at the end of the first sentence? Uh, one paper copy. Look up the town clerk at waitley.org without too much trouble. Well, let's see. The, this sentence, Judy, that I'm highlighting just speaks to paper copies. 
No. One sentence above. One sentence oh. above. And one digital copy. To the town clerk. So this is. Uh, just at the end of the first sentence, just add to the town clerk. Okay, so you mean the first clause here? First sentence in number two. Yep. And with a check for $50 made out to the town of Whiteley. Yep. To the town clerk. Yeah, but you're oh. not going to make the check electronic. Right. No, but they all go to the town clerk. I see. Right. So, so send a digital copy to the town clerk. I'm just trying to all of it goes all of it goes to the town clerk. <laughs> yep. How about just uh, please? Let's try this reading on. Please submit the following to the town clerk. Four copies of Form A and of the proposed plan, one digital copy of the plan, and a check for $50 made out to the town of Waitley. Okay. Is that, is that good? Yep. All right. Um, all right, so that's good. I will save. You put this in our forms folder. Yep. And, uh, Brent, you need to take out what you yep. typed in below, though. Um, oh, yeah, you typed yeah, yeah. in the digital right. copy should be. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good eyes. Good catch. All right. One, one for you. Okay, so I'm saving this. Save as town of Waitley. Uh, and this in the forms, and we're going to uh, um, uh, rev two. I'm going to just add rev two to the end of the file name, Judy, in the forms folder. Sure. Save it there. All right, so that's form a draft. And then you we need to we need to vote that. Okay. All right. So I will move that we accept the revised form A as amended. I'll second that. Okay. So we'll do that via roll call. Um, Judy. Aye. Tom. Aye. Sarah? Aye. Brandt is aye. So um, unanimous approval of the revision to form A. Now, what was it else that occurred to you about this, Judy, besides just changing the well, form? This is, as I tried to say in the email, the, the guidelines are really intended to be kind of a user-friendly summary of the requirements in the subdivision regs. Okay. And so I went back and I looked in the subdivision regs, say three copies uh, digital. And they never were updated to have the requirement to certify that there was no APR involved. So at some point, and I don't, I think we need to also update the subdivision regulations. Okay. Um, and I submitted a draft, but in order to do, to update a regulation, you need to have a public hearing. It doesn't need to go to town meeting, but it does need a public hearing. And somehow the thought of incurring the advertising cost for these changes to the subdivision regs seemed a bit much. Hmm. Um, because I think we can ask for these extra stuff, even though the regs don't require it. I mean, I don't think we're breaking any laws or anything, but it, so I suggested 
that maybe the next time we hold a public hearing for something else, we could add this on the agenda and not have two sets of advertising costs. I think that's and amazing. maybe in that case, um, you want to think about a little bit. What I did in the draft for this is try to, it seemed to me paragraph A and paragraph C in the existing regs said essentially the same thing and were repetitive. So I tried to consolidate A and, and then insert in C the condition about the a, APR, which that agriculture policy had not been voted in aught eight or whenever the subdivision regs were last looked at, 2003, I think. Okay. So, so I don't know whether it's worth discussing tonight or, but at some point that needs to be cleaned up. Huh. Well, this sounds like a sleeping dog that we can allow to sleep for at least another meeting cycle. Yeah, and, and maybe you just, uh, at some point we have to do a total review of the subdivision regs. There are a lot of problems there. Um, this would be an easy fix, um, but then you have to reprint the whole thing. <laughs> um, to, to totally redo them, I mean, we we want to get some smart growth guidelines in. We want to, when Pine Plains was built, we found some inconsistencies. Um, it's it's a major project and we need a grant for, to get some FERCOG help or something. Okay. And a lot more energy than I think any of us have while we're dealing with all these marijuana things. Yes. So, okay. but. But anyway, just to be aware of it. And, um, you know, this is the kind of thing, maybe we could just do a paste amendment in, in the subdivision regs. It's easy to change the ones online. It's the print copies that get. Right. So, so I would suggest next time we have a public hearing, we, right. we make these changes too. So we would have a public hearing for a site review, yes? Yep, or, or a zoning change. Right. So for example, if like right now, it looks like there could be an upcoming public hearing on a site plan review for say the Brotherton property. Yep. So you're saying we, if we did that, um, we could just tag on. Mm -hmm. Or even DMs TCT, depending on what we decide. That's right. DM. DMCTC. DMCTC. CTC. Okay. Obviously been too long since we've had to deal with them. <laughs> um, okay, so we're closed on that subject for now. We'll get the, Judy, you'll get the revised document over to Amy for posting on the website. Yeah. Perfect. Um, on our agenda, I see that uh, Mary sent around minutes, minutes ago, which I have minutes not ago, had. I'm not expecting to do anything with them tonight, but I almost, <laughs> at least now you're sure that they exist. Okay. And you have a, plenty of time to review them. I'm sorry they were so late. Okay. So we will not review and approve minutes tonight. Um, so I probably can take the Brotherton matter offline because it's just a simple clarification and maybe I can get Don or Judy to um yeah we should I'd have trouble seeing the documents on on the iPad anyway. Yeah. So but what I'd like to do is share the email we received from DMCTC, which I skimmed so I would benefit from just having a chance to kind of read it along with all of you more carefully so we can get a response to them. All right, so I'm sharing this one email. So they're preparing a special permit. So this is for Seven River Road. So it looks like they wanna do now indoor cultivation. 
and they want to hang lights in the greenhouse so they can do indoor cultivation. And weren't there, as I recall, we did have some conditions on Seven River Road about lights emanating from their buildings. But when we reviewed their original site plan, as I recall, Judy, there, you know, they said they weren't going to be, they're going to be doing minimal lighting. I mean, at that time, they weren't talking about sort of serious indoor cultivation with horticultural lighting. So that seems to be something they want to change. Well, that's because they got expedited. They got their approval expedited if it wasn't indoor cultivation because supposedly it was less energy intensive. Uh -huh. not to have the so they were applying in a different stream or a different category. So one issue with the new lights is the amount of energy. I mean, we energy that would be involved. Like, and, you know, what kind of covering they would have and things like that. Yeah. The other thing, I don't know what happened with the, so I think that's the only change they're proposing is now to have lights, but, but that might, that means that they will be doing more cultivation during the winter, I would assume, which they, you know, which is why they're doing it. Um, So that there are, but we also had that complaint from the neighbor about light emanating, which must have been from the nursery. I don't know what happened. That's been resolved. I went, I went back and forth with both sides. And the last I heard from Tim Smith was that it was just a transitory thing and has not, uh, has not, I mean, I've heard nothing for, the last I heard is that it hadn't happened again. Well, it's it's a different kind of cultivation. Um, I I would think that the the only the issues involved would be what kind of covering they plan to have to present prevent light pollution and mm -hmm. how it affects their energy plan. So this does not seem to meet the definition of a de minimis change to their site plan. There's think, no change in the physical structure of the buildings per se, right. but there is a change in the operational requirements. Yeah. Um, I think Tim Smith is the only abutter, but I think we would we would need we would certainly want more information and we would want the ability to establish conditions and whether it's not like we would waive the site plan review, I don't think. Yeah. And if we don't waive it, I think we need to have the public hearing. Yeah. Yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't waive the public hearing. At most, we would have a public meeting to decide that, um, as I we did that, before. I think though that if, if we don't waive the formal, if we don't waive the site plan review, we have to have a public hearing, I think. Yeah, I agree, I agree. And so I, I think, think the answer, want, go ahead, Judy. I think we wanna have a site plan review. Or at and least if we're going to put conditions on lighting where we would have to do a review, have to have, have that in the context of a review, correct? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what would be the structure if we didn't have a site plan review? Um, deference to the abutters about uh, review of the lighting. Yeah. I mean, technically, I suppose we could ask, we could, we could ask for the information and discuss it and impose conditions on the existing special permit, but it's, it's, it's a totally different kind of marijuana processing under our bylaws. So I really think we have to go through it. 
I'm just, um, I'm, I'll actually just, uh, just so everyone can see what I'm looking at here. I decided to just bring up on my computer the. Right, because we approved them for outdoor cultivation. We did, right. And so These are the site plan indoor conditions. cultivation. Yeah. They might need an, another special permit, actually. Yeah, that, that's think... what they're going for. Okay, well, if they're going for a special permit, then I think probably they need another site plan review. Actually, and if you can see what I'm highlighting here, this was one of the conditions on our set approved site plan review in this November, 2020, horticultural lighting is to be used only in the nursery and she'll be shielded from exterior view at night. So yeah. by adding, by doing an indoor cultivation with horticultural lighting, they would no longer be consistent with that condition. So yeah. I think that's another reason why the uh, 2020 site plan review would no longer apply to this new plan. Well, also under the table of use, indoor cultivation is a totally separate use. Mm. Okay. So I think that's it. We Is there consensus that I should write back to DMCTC and tell them that they're going to need to go through a regular site plan review for this. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. Okay. All right, I will get that communication back to DMCTC. Um, then I think we can, unless there's any other business for tonight, we might be able to call it a night. Just I have a piece a, of a that. Quick, is there a quick update on the Moynihan um, uh, building inspector letter? I um, believe the select board is discussing a draft letter from the select board to the building inspector tonight at their meeting. Oh, interesting. There is ground broken there. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Has a building permit been issued? Because there is work going on on the north side of the, the bar. I don't that know. I don't know. I have not. Uh, we we I I conveyed the letter to the building inspector that we all agreed to. I didn't get a response. Not that I necessarily expected one. And I had made a note to try to call the building inspector, though I failed to do that. So I have no new information from the building inspector to share. Well, I think maybe tomorrow we can ask for a copy of the letter that the select board is sending to the building inspector. <coughs> Okay. Um, I'll just, since I think that's where Hannah is, she's at the select board meeting, um, I'll um, email her to. Those of you without company could sit in on that meeting. It's, <laughs> it's fairly far down the agenda. Oh, and that's, um, is that, when does that start at six? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that it's could be a, a fun way to. You want to look at the revised agenda, and it's inserted um, fairly far down. I would think it probably wouldn't get on, wouldn't be discussed before seven. Okay. But who knows? You never know. Okay. Any uh, so Tom, that your question was about the Moynihan thing. Judy, I respond to that. Any other business before maybe somebody makes a motion to adjourn? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. I don't think that is one we have to vote on, right? So we are adjourned. <laughs>